Right, you've got to stick with me on this one. This is not easy. Ayinga Jubilums Beer, 140 Yar, Alt Bayerisch, Dunkel, Unfilterite. Fuck me, I'm knackered. <laughs> Jesus Christ. If you're going to call a beer something catchy, for fuck's sake, don't call it that. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. This beer is one I've been trying to get hold of for fucking ages, and I've ordered it twice from the House of Trembling Madness, and both of them times they've sent me the filtered version. Not sure whether it's because they genuinely made a mistake or they just didn't, didn't have it in stock. But what they sent me was the filtered version, which is probably one of my favorite dunkles. So I didn't even ring him up to complain because it is a fucking superb beer. But when I saw this, my favorite dunkle, I thought I've got to try this because if the filtered version is great, the unfiltered version, I would imagine is gonna be even better. This is from Ayinga. Now, Ayinga are a very special brewery. They have been going since 1878, and they are based in a place called Eying, would you believe, which is in between sort of Munich and the Alps. And they do make a big thing about not, well, they're obviously not part of the Oktoberfest in Munich because they're not a Munich brewer, but they do their own Oktoberfest, and I love that. And to be honest, if I was gonna go somewhere, I think Eying, would be my place to go if I was going to go to a beer festival in October because I imagine Munich is full of tourists. No disrespect to any of the breweries that are there and no disrespect to the people. But me being a miserable old fucker, I, I do like things on a smaller scale. Same goes for gigs. I'd rather go to a... I'll give you an example. Here's a, a very good example. And I'm going way off on a tangent here, so bear with me. There's a band called Madball. If you've not heard of them, Check them out, really good New York hardcore punk stroke hardcore band. Play some great music, love them, really good. Been into them for years. I took me and the missus to go and see them a few years ago in a little tiny venue in London called the Black Heart, which is in Camden Town. And the night before, they'd played, well, they'd supported Limp Biscuit. They were the first band on at Wembley Stadium. No, was it Wembley Stadium or Wembley Arena? It was one of them big venues. It could have been, I think it's Wembley Arena. But they supported them there. And of course, Limp Biscuit are fucking huge over here. I'm not a fan at all, to be honest, but there you go. That's just subjective. But I remember going to the venue in Camden and I walked in and I saw them all sitting down at the table having a beer I said hello to them had a quick chat with them and all that lovely fellas real nice people come to gig got on stage first words out of his mouth was not fucking hello how are you it's great to be in London first words first two words fuck Wembley <laughs> because that's that's the home of I think what where punk music really should be, not these big fucking venues. They do it in Rebellion. And somebody uh, asked me the other day, um, there's a gig coming up in the Roundhouse in Camden. And don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking venues, not knocking these big venues at all. But when it comes to punk bands, I like to see them in small venues. And there's a band called Coxbarra. If you've not heard of them, check them out. They're not bad, you might like them. Old Skinner band from years ago. But they're playing and it's 40 pound a ticket and they've sold out one night already and they've put some more on and it's 40 quid. I refuse to pay it. I've seen them in such small venues where they've been absolutely brilliant and now I've got to pay 40 pounds to see them in, in the roundhouse. Not happening. I know I shouldn't do it and I'm, and I'm always slagging off you know, venues closing down and all that but 
Come on, man. We're working men and women. You know, we've got overheads. Anyway, rant over. Let's get back to the beer. Oyinga, Outbar is Dunkel. My favourite dark beer, and I've tried some fucking belters, believe me, from Bavaria, but I think this stuff, not this stuff, the, the filtered stuff, the Outbar is Dunkel, is my favourite. I don't know what it is about it. Maybe it's because it's the first Dunkel I ever tried, but it, yeah, it just bowls me over. I think it's fantastic, and as I say, when I found out there was an unfiltered version, I thought this is going to be full of flavour. So that's why I've tracked it down. And I actually had to put on my order to the Has Trembling Madness, make sure it's the unfiltered version because twice they've sent the, the filtered version, which is very nice, but I really do want to try this. And now I've got it, everything's all right. So let's shut up and let's get this investigated. Right. Oyinga Altbarish Dunkel Unfiltered. I'm not even going to pronounce the other words because you've heard it all before. Uh, no brew sheet on this, unfortunately, but it is 5% and it is a 500ml bottle. It's in a little, what they call a builder's half litre in Bavaria. And the ingredients are Wasser, Gaston Malt, Hopfen, Heifer. That's what you want to see. Water, malted barley, hops and yeast. It's got the EU protected status and the Wittelbach coat of arms. If you're a fan of Bayern Munich or you've, you're a fan of football and you've seen that, that is the Bavarian coat of arms from the Wittelbach family. And that's about it really. The sell by date is ooh, 25th of the 4th, 2022. So this is out of date. No, I'm lying. Magoo strikes again. The sell by date is the 25th of the 2nd, 2023. So it's well in date. Let's get it open and let's see what's going on. Right, I've just tried the St. Georgen Boy Marzen, or Gold Marzen, as they call it. That was brilliant. It was a really nice lager. Very, very different from most German lagers. Really fruity. When I say fruity, I do mean fruity. Orange and peach, but not in the American style. If you can imagine that done in a German style, it was fucking lovely. There you go, just a gold cap. That's all it needs, understated. Oh, look at that. That just looks, just looks like heaven. And this is about the correct temperature as well. They say to drink this at nine degrees. And I'm no expert, but it's not ice cold. This is chilled, that's how I would describe that but how I would describe that head is a fucking abortion you've ruined that you silly bastard what does it smell like wow it smells quite sulfury why is it smelling like that hmm oh there we go there we go there's the nutty the nutty, dark caramel malt. Oh, it's fucking lovely. I think what I was getting there was a bit of a, a sulfurous aroma where it built up in the bottle, probably because it's unfiltered. Look at that head retention. It's fucking superb. I know I've messed that. This is a very lively beer, I will say that. And because it's unfiltered, I should have put this in a bigger glass. But we are where we fucking are. That smells superb. That smells like an even richer version of the filtered version, if you can imagine that. And look at it, there's plenty of carb carbonation in that. The head is just fucking outrageous because Captain, because Captain Twat has just poured that like a fucking idiot. Anyway, let's get it down the hatch. Bottoms up. Oh, <laughs> fucking hell. Wow. Oh. And the late finish on it as well. Wow. Almost like roasted malt on the end of it. Wow. 
this is amazing stuff I need to get another mouthful of that to give it a a proper a proper taste And the finish on this is just insane. It just lingers and lingers. Wow. And that's almost like a, it's almost like a stout towards the end. That roasted malt is just so intense. Wow, this is an amazing dunkel. It really is superb. And it's very complex, and I, I'm going to have to take another mouthful out of this. I will say one thing. On the palate, I'm thinking, this isn't that great. It's not that great. And then the finish, it just, whoa, it, it really does make up for it. That is superb. I'm going to take another mouthful. Stand by. Wow, this is so complex. Again, I will say it's very bitter on the palate. Almost, and I'm not going out on a limb here, almost like an English bitter, if you can imagine that. But the finish is where it really shines. That's where it all comes back into place. And you realize that's the Iinga Dunkel that you know, or the Altbarish Dunkel that you know. But there's a creaminess to it as well that just lingers and lingers. It's, I don't know, I'm, I'm really struggling with this because there's so many flavors. It's not that I'm struggling to get flavor. There's fucking too much of it, to be honest. This caramel, toffee and bordering on chocolate malt and this is made with five malts as well. So potentially that's probably why I'm getting that. But on the palate, there is a bitterness to it, which is like a spicy, hot bitterness, which puts me in mind of an English bitter. And I'm loving it. You don't get this with the filtered version. I will say that the filtered version is very clean. It's quite nutty, quite sweet, goes down great. And it's a guzzler. This, on the other hand, this is one that you really need to, you really do need to sit down and analyze the flavors because they are fucking huge. And that finish, the finished lasts for ages. Wow. It's almost like a meal in a drink. I've never had that before. It just leaves you, that, what does it for me in this? It's not so much what you get on the palate, it's the finish. And the finish is what really does play with your, your senses. You're trying to get all these flavors. And as I say, there's, there's a lot of toffee malt, a lot of caramel malt, and there's some of the liquid bread in there as well, but that's subtle. It's more about the dark flavors or the dark beer flavors like caramel and toffee malt. Toffee malt is subtle. I did say it was big. It's not actually, it's quite subtle. It's all about the caramel malt. The nuttiness you get on the filtered version isn't quite there, but the finish is huge. And the finish, it really does play with your senses. And I'm, I've had this a couple of times with certain beers but you get a different type of flavor with every mouthful. And to do that in a beer, it genuinely means you know what you're doing when you're brewing beer. And this brewery has won so many awards for their beers. And throughout the 90s, believe it or not, they were awarded the honor of being the best brewery in Germany. And that takes some doing when you compare the, the competition there. And they won it. 
And I can see why with stuff like this. Now this was brewed for their Jubilee, or their, their 140, 140th anniversary, I should say. And fuck me, they really did pull out all the stops with this one. I really am being put in mind of an English strong ale with this, which is really unusual. The hop character on this gets bigger as you get down the glass. Where the English ale, you have the, the invert sugar. This is all done through the malt. And even now, I'm getting flavors from that finish in my mouth. And it's very, very intense roasted malt. I could go on for ages with this because every mouthful is, I wouldn't say it's different, but it's producing new flavors. This is an absolutely amazing beer. It really is. I'm not saying I wouldn't class it as a dunkel, because it is, obviously, but it's on another level. And when I say it's on another level, this could even be its own unique style, because I still keep coming back to this having elements of a of a really really good English bitter in this and a, a fantastic German Dunkel with just tons and tons of flavour. It really is a fantastic beer. And the flavour is so rich. As I say it's almost like a meal. You could call this German Slim Fast if you wanted to. Again, on that on that mouthful, there's more caramel malt that I'm getting. This is amazing. This is absolutely fucking amazing. I urge you to try and get some of this stuff, just for the and really analyse the flavours. Don't just drink it as a you know a, a session beer or just a, a chugger. You really need to analyse the flavours in this. Make sure you get it at the right temperature. Don't drink it ice cold. Let it warm up a little bit. So as it's just chilled, and the honestly, when I say there's a different flavour coming through in every mouthful, there really is. Amazing, absolutely fucking amazing. So what's the verdict on the Oyinga Jubilar? Jubilarms beer, 140 yard, alt Irish Dunkel, unfiltrate. My German mate is going to absolutely fucking piss himself at that attempt at a fucking pronunciation. But regardless, this beer is absolutely amazing. And it's amazing for a number of reasons. The alt Irish Dunkel, the filtered version, is probably, well, it, I would say it is my favourite dark beer. And there has been some absolute fucking belters that have come out of Bavaria and elsewhere that have come close. But for me, the Iinga Alt Barish Dunkel is my favorite. But this, I'm, I don't know. I had visions of, of me just reviewing this beer and saying, oh, it's gonna be like a, a bit more intense version of the Alt Barish Dunkel, but it really isn't. This is very complex if you serve it at the right temperature. There's a lot of the element of an English bitter in this, and an English strong ale. And I don't know why, probably because it's unfiltered. It's, it's quite sweet. It's got roasted malt on the finish. The finish has to be experienced to be believed. It's probably one of the longest, most complex, complex finishes I've ever had in a beer. And it's absolutely blown me away. And I do think this potentially could be one of the contenders for best beer of the year. It's, honestly, I'm almost speechless and it's rare, it's virtually unknown that fucking a twat like me is speechless, but it just it has blown me away. <clears throat> If you like the filtered version of this, you're gonna love this because 
yes, there's elements of the filtered version, but there is a hell of a lot more going on. It really is. Do you know what? I should have bought two bottles of this because I could I could go on for hours describing the flavour. And I don't think, well, there is one, the Fuller's Vintage Ale or the Tint Meadow even. They're two beers that I think are just fucking head and shoulders above everything else, but for me personally. But, but this is definitely a contender. Jesus Christ. What the fuck? It's like a, a little bottle of dynamite, this is, when it comes to flavours. Amazing. Um, what mark am I going to give it? Do you really need to know? That is a fucking 10 out of 10. If I could give it 11 out of 10, I would. It really is good. And it's one of them really special beers, in my opinion. They occasionally come along. As I just mentioned, the Tint Meadow, the Fuller's Vintage Ale, and I'm, I'm struggling to sort of think of beers that are on a level like this. I don't think any of the Munich brewers, as good as they are, have come up with something like this. But that's insane. And I wouldn't even class it as a Dunkel. It's, it's like, <laughs> get me now, I'm fucking, I'm going off on one. It's otherworldly. And there's only a few things that are otherworldly in my opinion. If you've ever heard a great piece of music that just takes you onto another level, then this is the beer equivalent. Don't get me wrong, I'm not getting out of me pram, but it really is a fucking great beer. It's just so complex. It really is on a different level to the average run-of-the-mill German Dunkels. This is, it, it really is. It, for me, I know they've done this for their, their Jubilee celebrations and all that, and fuck me, they have come up trumps. This is on a par with the Fuller's Vintage Ale, in my opinion. That's how good it is. It's amazing stuff. And that, for me, is a fucking 10 out of 10. I urge you to get it. Uh, I'll tell you how much it is exactly, because in the words of Neville Chamberlain, I have here a piece of paper in my hand. And what is it? Come on, you twat. It's all in capital letters. Um, and you can't find it, you fucking moron. Where is it? Hang on. There's some fucking great bits. Oh, this is £2.60. Now, if you want to be absolutely blown away by a beer, one of the beers that you will need to try if you do really care about flavour in beer, this is one of them. And if you can't part with £2.60, then I feel sorry for you. But that is fucking amazing. That is a 10 out of 10 all day long. Try some, it will change your life. And remember, just like this stuff, Beer is working class champagne.